I'm John Evans. Welcome to another episode of One on One. They head up the men's and women's basketball programs at UNC Wilmington. But Takeo Siddle and Nicole Woods have more than just that in common. Both grew up here in North Carolina. They played their high school and college basketball at schools in the state. And both went on to coach as assistants at universities here in North Carolina before landing their first head coaching jobs here in Wilmington. But Nicole Woods would like to add something else to their similarities by successfully rebuilding a program that has fallen on hard times recently. Takeo Siddle did it with the men's program, and he thinks it won't be long before Woods does it too. They are the leaders of the basketball programs at UNCW. Happy to have men's head basketball coach Takeo Siddle back on the podcast. Coach, good to see you again. Good to see you, John. Thanks for having me. And for the first time, let's welcome the head coach of the women's basketball team, Nicole Woods. Coach Woods, welcome to the one-on-one -on -one with John Evans podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me about the past five months. What's it been like for you since you became uh, Mike Oblinger's first major hire at UNCW? No pressure. No pressure at all. You know, first <laughs> major hire. Well, I tell you, it's been a whirlwind, as you can imagine. I came from Charlotte, had been there the last 10 years, and I'm from Gastonia, which is right outside of Charlotte. So um, you could imagine uh, what it took moving everything um, here to Wilmington. So from that standpoint, it was it was a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, and then was without a staff for two months. And so the first two months were definitely me uh, drinking water out of a fire hose. But <laughs> since then, you know, um, and having uh, having my staff now, it's been great. It's been a great transition. Mike Oblinger, uh, Tiffany Tucker, Takeo have all been great resources for me in helping me with the transition. And Takeo, what were your thoughts when you heard that Nicole Woods was the new head basketball coach of the women's program. I was excited. You know, I, I take pride in obviously my program here on the men's side, but I've always wanted to see um, the women's program succeed as well because I like, and I think you know this, John, like this Wilmington, North Carolina, the university. Um, you know, I think that all the athletic programs can be successful, but, you know, I feel like me and me and Nicole, we work hand in hand. And I think, um, you know, as, as we continue to succeed, uh, it can only help her. And when she starts getting this thing rolling, which I think she's going to do it very, very quickly, uh, no pressure coach. I think she's <laughs> going to do an unbelievable job. Uh, I think we can, you know, feed off each other and help each other. And, um, you know, I think we, we've kind of had similar paths and, um, you know, we both were considered really good recruiters and uh, relationship people. And uh, as I got to know more about her, um, you know, I got even more excited uh, that she was going to be, um, you know, one of one of my friends and somebody that I work um, hand in hand with right beside. So I'm excited. I've, I've been excited. And I, I told her the other day I was in the gym um, just, you know, kind of fiddling around watching, watching her workouts. And I started to get chills and I, and I really do mean this. Like I could feel the spirit. It was really high in there. And um, I like to think that, that I know what it looks like a little bit. Um, and, and she's definitely uh, off to a great start. Well, you know, you mentioned that, you have similar stories. I'm going to get into your backgrounds in a little while, but, you know, Coach Siddle, you came in, the program had struggled for a couple of years, and, and it was your job to kind of turn it around. And Coach Woods, the program here has struggled for a couple of years, and it's your job to kind of turn it around. Did you have conversations in this process, Coach Woods, maybe picking Takeo's brain a little bit more and finding out what he did when he started, how to t make this program your own? Well, one thing he said to me from the beginning, he said, get people who fit who you are, you know, fit who you are and that are good people to the core. And that's something that, that I was going to do anyways. And because I feel like a, a lot of times, you know, you might go and you might see a four or five star recruit and they might be an amazing player, but they just don't fit who you are 
as a person and who what you want your program to be. And that's something that's big for me um, in terms of the, the young ladies that I bring into this program. Um, I only brought one in this year and could have brought multiples in, but I didn't. I passed on a lot because they just didn't fit who, you know, who we were and who I wanted our, our team to be. And so um, takeo has been great. I, I've tapped, like I said, I've tapped him a couple of times about some different things. Um, I, I'm the first one to say I don't know it all, but I am one to say that I know some people that knows the answers to the questions. And so um, he, he's always been there and, and has really helped me here uh, from the beginning to really understand the lay of the land of Wilmington, the city itself, um, as well as the university. What were some of those things that you remember when you took over, Coach Siddle, about, you know, those first couple of months, the first six months, the first year that maybe you put up a warning flag to Coach Woods about to don't fall into this kind of a trap? Yeah, I, I just for me, I, I'll just say when I came in, um, obviously, you have to evaluate the job before you take over. Um, so I wanted to get in the building and um kind of see it, you know, see it up and, you know, live in person. And, um, one thing that, that when I took over, some of my mentors told me is just make sure you be yourself um, and don't, don't waver for anybody. Um, the things that you believe in don't, don't waver at all. And uh, like, like Nicole just mentioned, um, you have to have the, the right personnel around you. That's the team. That's the coaching staff. Um, that's the support staff, just getting the personnel in place and then establishing your culture, what you're going to be about, uh, your standards, your expectations, all of that. And, um, it wasn't, it wasn't where it needed to be. So we had to complete, we had to do a complete facelift with all of that stuff. And, um, you know, it wasn't comfortable, but it had to be done. And, um, I think we're off to a pretty good start. You both, as I said before, you have a lot in common. You both grew up in North Carolina, both played ball, college ball in North Carolina. You both got into, into coaching before getting that first head coaching job. Coach Siddle, how has the sport changed in the 15, 16 plus years since you actually played at Gardner Webb? Well, I'll say this, John, I think is, I think the, uh, on my side, the young men have changed with the way that they kind of operate. They, they don't necessarily, like you can't coach them the same. I can't coach them the same as I did when I first started. Um, it just, it's not gonna, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Um, so we've kind of had to adjust to um, the, the type of player, the type of person that you're getting. Um, and, and I would say, you know, just, um, you just have to deal with them a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that's probably the biggest thing, just the, the, the players, the people that you're dealing with. Um, they're different than what the, than what they were when I first started. Uh, and that's, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just something that, um, that we've had to adjust to. And I've had to adjust to it even over the course of the last uh, few years since I've been here. Coach Woods, what about you? What have you noticed since the, the days at Belmont Abbey and the times that you were actually playing ball and then your, uh, what, decade plus of uh, assistant coaching? What's the difference in the sport now but from when you played it? Well, you know, it's this thing called the transfer portal, you know. Um, and I remember being a freshman at, at Belmont Abbey and I came in out of shape and you know, just thought I was God's gift. They should be happy to have me here and hadn't done anything all summer long and hit that track, you know, the first, that first Tuesday. And it was rough going for me. And I remember struggling my freshman year so much. So I packed up my dorm room and keep in mind, I went to Belmont Abbey and I'm from Gastonia. So 10 minutes, you know, up the road, I packed up my room and my mom looked down when it, when I pulled in in the carport. She saw all the stuff in my in my room, in my car, and she put the padlock on the door. And she's like, "Well, you can't come back here, you know." <laughs> so, so, so I went back. You know, I went back, and it ended up turning out to be, you know, pretty pretty good for me. But my point is, transferring wasn't even a thought at that time. It was, you know, you need to get in shape. I need to get better. I, there's no way I should play you know, in comparison to my teammates. And that's what I did, you know, and I, I just think that the transfer portal has opened up um, our game in a way 
that that's never been seen before. Yeah, you know, people transferred before, but it, it's just at a at a whole different level now, especially with them not having to sit out a year. And I think that that makes a big difference, you know, and saying, you know, Takeo said, hey, you know, it's different. It is very different, you know, because this guy, this girl is like, well, hey, if I can't do this here, you know, I don't have to work hard. I don't have to do the things that, you know, you should do to be able to play. I could, I could just leave. And that's a that's a big hurdle that we all face, you know. And so we're we're recruiting our team every single day, every single day. And I was going to ask you, as athletes, is it better for the athlete now? Maybe tougher for the coaches, tougher for the program, but is it better for the athlete now, Coach Woods, than it maybe was when you were playing ball? Well, it's definitely better overall for the athlete. You know, I came through when, you know, they could give you bagel but no cream cheese, you know, for um, during Christmas break and things of that nature. So they do have a lot of um, other things afforded to them, summer access, things that we just did not have um, coming through when it was time to play. And, you know, I think it's better in that regard. But I don't know if it's better to say, hey, I, you know, it's one thing if there's a coaching change, things of that nature, I want to transfer. But it's another thing to say, you know, I just don't want to put the legwork in, you know, so I'm going to go over here and play for X, Y, and Z. I just don't feel like that is, you know, really teaching them what life is really like. You know, when you get into the real world and they get into their their professions, are they just going to quit, you know, when things get hard? Or are they going to put the, the time and the work in? to be able to, to get better. And, and that's my concern. Do you recruit differently now to KO than you did 10 years ago? Do you have to recruit a young man now? And maybe you recruited his parents 10, 12 years ago. Do you still have to approach an athlete the same way about their future, about the UNCW program? I think you do. I think you have to you know I've, we've kept our same, I won't say recruiting philosophy, but for me, we've, we've, um, always recruited families. Uh, we've always recruited them uh, really hard. Maybe sometimes harder than the than the prospect. Um, but I think when you when you look at it, like Nicole say, you're, you're recruiting them every day. Um, one thing that that we've always done um, is we lay everything out there for them and tell them how it's going to go. So when they arrive on campus if they do decide to come play uh, here at UNCW, uh, for for example, um, that they know exactly what they're getting. And then along the way, um, we keep it completely real with them and, and we tell them, you know, how they're progressing because um, we're evaluating them every day. And we, we want to make sure that, um, that everything that's out in front of them on a daily basis, they know exactly uh, what we expect, they know exactly what they're walking into. Um, so I think that's that's the best way, and I think that's how we've had the best results here. It's just laying everything out, keeping it real with them along the way, and um, you know we haven't had a lot of guys leave. Uh, we've had we've had a few for sure, but I think they appreciate the honesty uh, up front and throughout the whole the whole time that they're here. To be a standout now, is it a year round commitment? Coach Siddle, I mean, do you have do your recruits or your players have to be basketball twenty four seven outside of class? Obviously, I know they got to go to class and everything else, but you know, in those summer months, are they thinking basketball rather than well, maybe I'll play golf or maybe I'll play tennis? Well, it's it's uh, it's year round, John. To be honest with you, I mean, we when you look at our summers, we're here. They're here ten weeks, and we're able to work with them for eight weeks. Uh, but they're here. Um, we try to mix it up and keep it fun for them. Um, and I've experienced, I've experienced it different ways. I've, I did this past summer a lot different than I've done um, the first couple summers I was here. We've done all, we did all team workouts. We had about 31 team workouts this summer. And in the past couple summers, we've, you know, mixed it up with, you know, a couple individual workouts during the week and then maybe, on the back end of the week, we'll do a couple team, but it's a it's a job, and and I, if you want to be good at it, if you want to be good at it, you do have to work at it. But what I don't, what I did not want to do was burn them out, um, and, and not make it fun for them to the point where they didn't want to come in the gym and and um, you know 
didn't enjoy coming to practice and, and being around uh, the coaches and being around basketball. I didn't want that. So I think we, we did a pretty good job of kind of balancing it out for them. Uh, you've both been around uh, athletics for a long time. Uh, Coach Woods, it seems like every day I read this article, I read that article, and one f- college is moving to another conference, and then you've got two or three going to another conference. And then before you know it, you've got some conferences with 18, 19, 20 schools in it. Is that consolidation a good thing for college sports in your mind? I don't know if it's good or bad. I just know I'm confused, you know. I don't know who's <laughs> where. I, I have to look it up uh, all the time, you know, especially with doing scheduling now. I've got to look to see who's where, who's going where, um, things of, of that nature. You know, it's very different. You know, I, I just can't even imagine the schools that are on the West Coast being a part of the Atlantic Coast Conference, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, you, I mean, I, I get it um, that there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, But, you know, I've always been a fan of, you know, having regional, you know, teams that I feel like brings about certain types of rivalries. Like the fact that Maryland's not in the ACC anymore is just, you know, I still remember those Juan Dixon days, you know, and, you know, the the old Big East and just it's just different now. And I think some of the rivalries and, uh, you know, things that made Uh, those games that much more exciting to watch, you know, might falter a little bit because of it. What about you, TK? Are you a fan? I mean, now I have to think about, okay, Texas A&M, are they in, or when do they, I mean, used to, it was Texas A&M, Texas, Southwest Conference, Georgetown, UConn, Big East. You know, it doesn't roll off the tongue like it used to to have Stanford in the ACC. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with everything. Um, and I think Nicole answered it perfectly. Um, but let's talk about our conference. <laughs> I I don't like it for us. I, I don't like it. And I'll, I, you know, I've said, I've told, uh, you know, our commissioner, that I don't like it because, uh, you know, at having 14 teams and um, in a one bid league, it doesn't help us. Right. It doesn't help us. It makes it even harder for us. Um, so, you know, adding, uh, you know, Stony Brook, Campbell, and all, I just don't, it makes it tougher for us. Um, but for everybody else, it, you know, Nicole answered that perfect. It, it, it's not the same. It's not the same have not having Maryland in. Like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't roll off the tongue. You know, then they, you talk about Virginia potentially going to the Big Ten or it just doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue. Like you said, it's as smooth as it used to. Um, but in our conference in particular, I don't, I don't like it. It makes it tougher for us. Uh, Coach Woods, I know you're, you're fairly new to the Wilmington community. Um, and I know after this interview, you'll uh, subscribe and follow the one-on-one with John Evans podcast and listen to all 83 of the episodes. But uh, until that time, the first interview I did with Coach Siddle, he shared a turning point story with me that he was away from home at Hargrave Military Academy, wanted to go home, and he called his mom. And Coach Siddle, will you share that story again, that you called home and something happened that really changed your career path? It did. When I was was coming out of high school, I told told you this, John, I I needed needed a little bit more structure um, just all around, you know, basketball, academically. I just needed a little bit more structure. So um, I went down to, to Hargrave Military Academy, which I've heard a lot about it. Um, and it was a big time program at the time. And Kevin Keats was running that program. And uh, I was able to see their last um, tournament. And it was cadets everywhere. It was big time athletes flying around. And I wanted to be a part of it. But I didn't, I didn't know what it entailed. I didn't know the structure of the military um lifestyle. I didn't, I didn't know all of that. And so long story short, when I made the decision to uh, go up and try out and, and Kevin offered me a, a spot on his team, I was excited about it. We made it happen. I get on campus. I'm lost. I'm having to go to formation at six in the morning and I don't know where I'm going. I'm lost. I get, I'm late. 
have to, you know, go walk a square for hours and push ups. I'm getting punished for being late um, because I'm lost. And it was just a tough, a tough, um, tough go for me for a little while. And, you know, I was like, I'm a mama's boy and you know, I'm a homebody. And I'm like, <laughs> get this. I'm, I want to go back home. So I call my mom. I call my mom one night after study hall and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I, I want to go home. Like, and she's like, boy, I paid $20,000 for you to go there. I'll talk to you later. And she hung up on me. And <laughs> two weeks later, I was good. You know, I was at home. I was, I was rolling. Like I was happy to be there and everything got a little easier for me. And I was able to play for Kevin. And, um, you know, fast forward years later, I was able to come back and work, work for Kevin and uh, at, at Hargrave and then here at UNCW, which, you know, provided this opportunity that I'm in right now. And, um, you know, we're lifetime friends and I consider him a mentor and a father figure for me. So that was a turning point. And if I mom would have let me come home, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. What about you, Coach Woods? Do you have a turning point story you can share? I know tearing both ACLs would probably be, be a little discouraging, but what about you? What's a turning point story in your career path? You know, I was a little young when that happened, young and stubborn. So that was at 14 and 15 years old. So for me, that was just kind of a chip on my shoulder to show people I can still do this thing. You know, I went from being for one of the top guards in the state to, you know, 98 and 99, the ACL wasn't a big injury. And it uh, it, it was considered to be career ending, especially for, for girls at the time. So th that was my motivating factor. But the turning point for me um, was my after my sophomore year, um, I played my first two years and I didn't play as much as I, I wanted to. And, um, you know, I went to my coaches after and I asked them, what, what do I need to do to play? Like, I know I can help. I know I can be good. And Missy Typer, my coach at Belmont Abbey, said, you got to lose some weight. She said, you know, you can't go more than five, five minutes at a time right now. And, you know, I can't trust you to put you out there. I said, all right, coach, I want, you know, I, I want to lose weight. Why did I say that? Fast forward that entire summer from the spring all the way through the beginning of school year, my head coach and my assistant coach ran with me six days a week and we would run for miles. They trained for marathon. We would run for miles, you know, just run until I say, till I say stop, uh, change my diet 30 pounds later, um, came back fr fresh, uh, my junior year, first team all conference, senior year, player of the year in the conference. And that was a turning point for me. You know, that was the first time that I had really ever worked on my, my game and my physical attributes to be able to sustain the game that I loved and to be able to play. And I realized that, you know, just because you've just been naturally good at something, that's not good enough. Everybody's good. You've got to work. You've got to work and you've got to put the time in when nobody's watching to be able to get what you want. And so, you know, at, I, I always, you know, had that mentality, but to actually put it into practice, you know, um, that was definitely a turning point in, for me in my basketball career that then, you know, carried along with me in my, um, in my uh, professional career as well. But what a gift, though, they gave you. I mean, it's one thing, especially back then, for coaches to be X and O's and in the locker room at practice, but to be willing to run with you, you know, away from the program and away from the, the, the basketball floor had to be just an, an encouraging in ways that maybe you didn't even think about at the time. Absolutely. You know, I hope my players don't ask me to run with them. You know, I will. <laughs> I will. I don't know how much I'll help them. You know, I'm a Peloton girl. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Adrian Harlow and Missy Tiber and eight o'clock every morning. And, um, they invested in me, you know, they invested in me and I'll, I'll never forget that. And they gave me my first coaching opportunity. I started out as a graduate assistant at uh, SIU Carbondale and Missy Tiber had gotten the head coaching job. She called me up. I had no desire at the time to be a coach. Um, I was getting ready to go run a boys and girls club and do my nonprofit thing, which that's what my master's is in. And she called me up in 2009 and here I am. So I owe it all to them for sure. What changed between April of 2022 
and early this year, Coach Woods, because you were quoted in your hometown paper, the Gaston Gazette, as saying, I'm one of the few assistant coaches that has no desire to be a head coach at all. What changed? No desire, and that is an absolute fact. Um, I actually, growing up and in my early, you know, adolescent and uh, teenage career, I never had a, a plans to coach, period. You know, and I, I like to say Missy Tiber tricked me because she knows that my calling in life is to help people. Um, as I said, my master's is in public administration with a concentration in nonprofits. I was a boys and girls club kid growing up. So I thought that's what I was going to do. But I think she knew once I got into um, college athletics that I would see the impact that I can have on those young girls lives to be an example and a role model for them. And so, you know, I didn't want to be a head coach because I didn't think that I would still be able to have the relationships with the players that I really enjoyed on a day to day basis. I didn't think from from what I had seen that that would be possible. Um, and then I was just fearful. You know, I was fearful that I wasn't going to be good enough. I was fearful uh, of failing. And, you know, one day I just asked myself, why not? You know, why not me? And once I answered that question and, and said, all right, you know, Lord, I'm going to do what you'll have me to do. Literally, um, I went into my to my boss, Kara Consuegra's office on the Monday that we got back from um, our conference tournament loss. And I told her, I said, listen, I don't know what's next. I said, but I know my time here is done. Um, I'm going to help you to find my replacement to recruit some kids before I leave. I think I want to be a head coach and I'm going to start, you know, doing what I need to do to make that happen. The next day I got a call from UNCW. So there we yeah. go. That, that question, why not me is amazing. What it'll do for your, for your inner self. When you ask yourself that that's a, that's a great story. Coach Siddle, you've had a lot of success in the last two years, 51 wins, CAA tournament championship games. One site's picking you guys now as being the favorites for the league. Is that changing the way you prepare for this season compared to the way you prepared for the past two? No, that's 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 not that's not um, any like we don't I don't pay attention to that. You you know me well enough, John. We um, the team that I have, um, the team that we return, has made me prepare for this season a little bit different. If that makes sense. Right. We have. Um, nine returners um you know we have some experience we've added some some really good pieces we've added some experience and so the way we've attacked we attacked the summer the way we've attacked this preseason we've attacked it differently than uh than we have in the past trying to get us ahead of the ahead of the game you know a few steps and have us more game ready uh on game one um, so we've attacked, we've attacked things different, but the preseason rankings, they don't, they don't mean anything, uh, to us. Um, you know, we're just, we're just working and taking it day by day and, and trying to do the day in front of us. Well, um, Fans that's what we're about here. Fans are going to recognize a lot of names, Trezarian White, Malik Harden Hayes, the guys that they've seen, like you said, guys that they've seen play a lot of minutes for you. What kind of team are they going to be able to watch when that, first ball goes up and that whistle blows later this year. Yeah, well, I feel like if, after I say this, I feel like I'm doing a press uh, introductory press conference because everybody says this, but we're going to uh, we're going to be we're going to be fast. We're going to be explosive uh, offensively more than than we have in the past. Uh, I think my the, C, uh, the uh, CBI championship year, I think we had some firepower uh -huh. um, when you talk about Mike. Uh, both Jalen's and, and James Baker, um, and those guys were our—they were our core group. That and Shaquem, those, those guys were—you um, know—they kind of handled the scoring load for us. But uh, I think we'll be nine to ten deep, um, with not a lot of drop off. And I think we're going to be fast and explosive on offense. We'll be able to play the way that I've been wanting to play since I've been here. And then defensively, uh, we'll be able to press. Uh, the entire game, like I've always wanted to, uh, we'll be able to use our bench and, and uh, just, you know, throw waves of, of energy. And, um, you know, I'm excited about this group. I'm excited about this group. And uh, it'll be, we can stay healthy. It'll be uh, exactly what I 
what I visioned when I uh, took over the job. Coach Woods, give your fans uh, a little preview of some of the names, some of the uh, ways you want to play when the Lady Seahawks hit the floor. Well, I can guarantee you a few things. Number one, as Coach uh, Siddle said, when you come to watch us play, you're going to feel that it's different. Uh, the energy in which we play with, uh, we're going to compete, we're going to rebound, and we're going to defend every single night. I believe when you do those three things that you always have a, a chance to win the game. Um, and we've worked all summer um, on those things, um, as well as skill development. Uh, we have a lot of players, some that a lot of people don't know. You know, we had uh, four season ended injuries last year, and we've got some of those that will be back um, that, you know, a lot of people don't know about. We've got some freshmen that people don't know about. And then we've got returners that people do know about, like um, Lexi Jackson and um, Brittany Range, uh, Evan Miller, names like that. And so uh, for us, um, we will uh, play a decent amount of people as well. Um, I only have nine, so that's a good, excuse me, 11. Um, but that's the good thing about it is that everybody knows they have an opportunity to play. And so everybody's out there. They're they're doing um, everything I ask them to do. Um, offensively, we we definitely are going to um, share the ball and emphasize and, you know, us getting great shots. You know, I believe we can make great shots. You know, Coach Siddle's like, man, y'all making shots. I'm like, yeah, we can make great shots, and we're going to work to get the great shot, not the good shot. And I believe if we do those things and, as I said, compete, uh, rebound, and defend that that will be will be pretty fun to watch and you need I, I told I tell our girls all the time nobody except for us you know believes what we can do and so now it's our job to get out there and show everybody who we are um the rebranded us you know I allowed our team to come up with our mantra for the program this year and so you'll see the hashtag rise above and that came from them because they know where they've been and they know where they want to go and so it's just my job to help them get there when I set this uh, interview up, I asked uh, Joe Browning uh, that I wanted to do a status of the Seahawk hoops program. So, Coach Woods, if I had to ask you to describe the status of the Seahawk basketball programs, what would you say? I would say we're rebuilding in every way, rebuilding the culture, uh, rebuilding the, the basketball side of it. And, you know, er everybody is um, – we we read a book called The Energy Bus. So everybody's on the bus. We're all um, headed in the right direction. And I'm really looking forward to um, what's to come. And I, I tell everybody, you just got to come and see for yourself. You know, I can tell you all, all, I, all I want to, but you got to come see. And you all have been here, you know, for some years so that you'll be able to see the difference in where UNCW women's basketball is headed. Okay, Coach Siddle, your turn. Describe the status of the Seahawk basketball programs. Status. The status, we're in a good place. Um, we're ready for a breakthrough. We're ready for a breakthrough. It's like we're ready to yeah. do something very special. Well, Amen. to KO Siddle and Nicole Woods, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you guys are busy. I know the first practice of the fall isn't for another month or so, but I know it's a 24-7, 365. Coach Woods, Hope you are settling in here to Wilmington. We appreciate you joining us, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. Takeo Siddle, it's always good to talk to you again, and I know we'll be talking to you as the season goes on, and I know that uh, that team's ready to rock and roll over there at Trask Coliseum. Good to talk to you again. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. A big thank you to head coaches Takeo Siddle and Nicole Woods for carving out some time in their very busy schedules and joining me for this week's podcast interview their fall practice season should begin sometime around the middle of October. And if you want to follow along with everything men's and women's basketball, just go to uncwsports.com. Both of the coaches are active on social media, so follow them there. The women's team will open up at Trask Coliseum on October the 30th. And while the men's schedule hasn't been finalized yet, look for them to open up in Trask just about the same time. Now, before we go, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please follow or subscribe to the One-on-One -on -one with John Evans podcast on whatever app you use to listen to your favorite shows. And if you'd be so kind, please leave us a rating or a review. I do want to hear what you think about our interviews. And the more feedback we have from friends like you, the higher we'll be listed on the podcast apps 
and the better chance we'll have of bringing in even more new listeners. I'm John Evans. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of One on One.